there and welcome to How to Contribute to Node. Today I'm here with Michael Dawson. Hi, Michael. Hello, nice, <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Michael is a technical, he, he's on the technical steering committee. And uh, oh, Michael, you should introduce yourself because you do a lot. Sure. I, I don't think I could do, I could do a decent introduction. <laughs> sure, okay, yeah. I, I'm the Node.js lead for the, the Red Hat Node team. And what that means is I do get to spend a lot of time in the community. So as Tracy was mentioning, I'm on, I'm on the technical steering committee active in a whole bunch of the working groups and you know just get to work in all sorts of interesting parts like the the infrastructure and and node api and and just all sorts of things so basically you know if if uh if you're contributing into to node you'll probably run across me at some point that's true you're so good i just love uh you know in my work with node previously you were amazing and you're always everywhere and I always say that like it's so great, you know, you you like no problem is too small to bring to you, which I really appreciate about you. So thank you. Thank you for always. Yeah, I know. I like to things. like to make sure if we can unblock people and uh, you know, get them going, see if we yeah. can help out. And there is so much. I think that's what I love about the Node project. There is so much you can do. So much. So I think first question is just like how did you even get started contributing to Node? Yeah, actually, well, that started in Time Flies. I think it was about five or six years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, I was working on the the Java team. I've been was working at IBM for about fifteen years on uh, building. I guess fifteen years now it was ten years back then building the Java runtime. And Node runtime, you know, Node was the newest up and coming runtime that everybody was like, hey, this is really important. We got to make sure that it runs well on our IBM's platforms and and be able to support our customers when they're using it across all the platforms. So we need a team to get involved in that. Um, and you know, a team had been started just a little bit before I joined, and f with the initial focus of like, let's get Node running on those platforms. So we started by working to upstream changes in V8. Once we got those contributed, we worked on contributing them, the, like all the changes we needed in the Node project doing things like getting the hardware and, you know, the new machines in to support those platforms. Um, you know, and, and around that same time was the time where there was a little bit of a split. So we ended up working to kind of mend fences and bring people back together. And so it was kind of a great time for us, you know, myself in particular and, and other people to get involved and make a real impact in the project. That's amazing, wow. It seems like just yesterday, doesn't it? Does it feel like just yeah, yesterday? Yeah, I know too? it does. It seems like it's it's been forever that I, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, it seems like a long time and also the time has flown really quickly, so. I know, it's yeah. so crazy. Um, so I would love maybe a tour of the repo if you can and just sure. like how to navigate it, you know, I think it's a scary place. The internet is a scary place, but sometimes just seeing it and seeing how easy it is, is really helpful. Yeah, so maybe I'll just pull up. I pulled this up and I can share here. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, you know, if we go to the node repo, you can see there's a number like these show the pinned repo. So, mm -hmm. you know, number, uh, you know, the, the node repo is, is the core repo and that's where all the changes go in for the node runtime itself. Mm -hmm. But there's lots of other repos where important work goes on. You know, for example, the release repo is where we, where the team that focuses on getting the releases out collaborates and schedules meetings and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Node JIP is an important co component for, for, for building Node. The help repo where people help each other in terms of, you know, uh, not necessarily problems with the runtime, but, you know, for people who need help when they're writing JavaScript using Node. Mm -hmm. Node.js.org, which is the website. And then if we go down and we just look there's a whole pile of other repos as well. Like we have Node on examples. Um, and Dichi is like an, is a is a newer HTTP client that the project's working on. Next 10 is a repo that where we're working on like understanding what's important for the success of the next 10 years. Uh, we mentioned release. Build is one where we spend a lot of time, um, you know, Start where all the issues around the infrastructure are and stuff like that. And I'm just going to shrink this down to fit a bit better. Uh, let's see. And, you know, actually, if I look there, you'll see that 
there's actually quite a large number. A good number of them are related to internationalization. So you can kind mm -hmm. of, unless you're specifically interested in those, you can kind of, you know, I would pages say ignore them. Pages and pages. Right, but you know, <laughs> you don't need to, to, to be so aware of those. Um, so, you know, the starting point is always the, um, you know, the, the repositories, some of the mm -hmm. ones that I mentioned at the top. The way I would look at it, though, is, is, is a bunch of, so there, there's the core repository and then there's a bunch of supporting repositories. They'll either be for some particular piece of technology. Like if we mm -hmm. look at, I think like L, L, uh, L, LHTTP, I think is one. So this is the repository where the parser that we incorporate into Node is uh, pulled in. Mm -hmm. And um, so there, there'll either be something like that for some, one of the comments we, Com, uh, components we pull in, they could be for teams. So like, you know, the next 10 team, the package maintenance team, the build team, the release team, where teams collaborate. Um, so if you're trying to sort of figure out different places you might want to get involved, I really suggest, you know, a better way of, rather than just looking for the repos, although that, that is a good way to, one way to start, is to look at the calendar. So if I look here and I look at the Node.js calendar, and I think that's very okay. special part about Node. Like, I don't know a lot of projects that have like a calendar. <laughs> right. That is one of the special things I think too, is that Node is very, very open and transparent. And that's sort of part of the DNA to try and do everything transparently so that anybody who wants to know what's going on can, uh, you know, can follow, can see what's going on, can contribute mm -hmm. through GitHub. And part of that is, yeah, like having a calendar so you can find when the different meetings are. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, you know, to, 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 as a, you know, instead of going looking for the build repo, I would look to say what kind of meetings are on here. And if you see that there's a build team, then maybe you want to go look for the build repo and say, okay, well, I'm interested in build. Let's go look at the repo, what's going on. Um, but the calendar will show you sort of where people are getting together and where the active conversations, if you actually want to, you know, get to connect with people in person. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my one, you know, and I actually use this calendar all the time, uh, to sort of, you know, see what's going on, plan, plan my week for the next week and that, that kind of stuff. I love that. Most okay, of so the meetings, go mm -hmm. ahead. Sorry. No, just starting with a calendar, I feel like is the, would be your recommendation. Yes, exactly. Like if you want to start with the calendar, if you want to see if there's a group of people working on something that's sort of in your interest area, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a, tooling team. So if you're interested in tooling, you know, maybe you want to go and meet them. The Node API team meeting is around, uh, you know, native modules. So if you're interested in that, there's a diagnostics team we can see there. There's a website redesign team. So a team working on a new, new version of the website, uh, you know, build working group, package maintenance. Um, we've got our next 10 summit, which is next week. I'll make a pitch for that. I don't know when this is going out, but next, mm -hmm. this week is our summit on Thursday. Um, so that, that's, uh, something where we're diving into like some of the areas we think are important for node and, and trying to say, should the project be doing anything or are we on top of them and we're, we're in good shape, hmm. but you can just see from that calendar, there's all sorts of different groups that get together to talk about certain topics. And so that is a good way to sort of get in touch with some people who might be like-minded and working on things that you're interested in. Yeah. So like that is a lot. And I think, you know, if I were here, I would say, okay, I'm going to start going to all these meetings, going to see who these people are and everything. But like, how would I, you know, what would be like the easiest thing for me to do from a contribution perspective? Right. So here, let me just, I'm going to stop sharing because mm -hmm. it's weird. Uh, got to get my mouse back to the right screen if I can. Oh, there we are. Okay. So to the, the, and stop. Okay, I don't think that's got the view back. That's Why true. Is that? You're just a calendar. You turned it. I'm into just a calendar. a calendar now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> At least you're not a cat. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> cool. uh, while, while you do that, I'll say like the easiest, easiest thing to do is. Uh -huh is to actually use Node.js and use the documentation. Because mm -hmm. often, quite often, you know, 
a good way to get started is to find, you know, some small typos or whatever in the documentation itself, because mm -hmm. every new set of eyes who read through see different things. And, you know, I, I actually was doing this. I was, I was doing some investigation on types and I looked at just types and sure enough, mm -hmm. I read a section and there was like a typo. So I said, oh, I might as well, you know, submit a PR. So that, that's a good way I think is to like actually use the APIs because then you learn about the APIs yeah. and you might also spot something in terms of the documentation that isn't clear to somebody who's new, right. some typos or whatever. And so that, you know, that's a good way to get started. Um, and it's also kind of lays the groundwork a little bit for if you do want to make a sustained contribution, right? Cause it, uh, you know, we're very open and there's lots of different things you can do, but I mm -hmm. think what we found is that, it does take a real investment if you want to make a, you know, make a significant contribution, right? You might come mm -hmm. across some documentation changes and to be able to do that. But if you want to make sort of a sustained contribution, you're going to have to plan to invest in terms of learning maybe a particular area and then continue right. to work and understand that to be able to, um, to make that sustained contribution. So actually, you know, using the APIs will help you figure out if there's one that you're interested in and maybe learn a little bit more about those APIs like HTTP or, or one of the other ones as well. Yeah, I love that. That's a, that's a great reason to contribute to the documentation. I think people sometimes look at documentation and they say, eh, why bother, right? But I love like your perspective of saying, well, this is gonna help lay the groundwork for you for the future. So that's amazing. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah, exactly. It's like a the learn learning it, in our in our business, but node the node project as well. Like you got to do a lot of learning. Things are always changing, and so yeah, the more you can sort of set up to do something useful to learn, the better you'll be able to do a little bit later on. Yeah, that's amazing. Have you figured out your camera yet? <laughs> uh, I thought it was on your side. Like I stopped oh, sharing. No. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is it was sharing on both like you were sharing on both uh, screens. Right. Like when okay. you shared, yeah. So yeah, I'm no longer sharing. Let me try and, I could share the screen again. Share, and now it's going Yeah, crazy. so now you have two, yeah. So now I'm stopping. Oh. No, I stopped well, my something... camera. Oh, there you wait go. a sec, no, 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 I think I know what I did. Uh, right. Nope, that's, yeah, that was my fault. Um, I needed to look, oh, I need to look at the screen. So I switched my back, anyway. Yep, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back, I'm not just a calendar. I was a calendar, in fact. So, <laughs> so what are some no-nos when looking to contribute to the repo? So really the, the I mean, there's a few things, obviously, you know, most of them are obvious. The first one is like, we are very heavily uh, focused on making sure it's a sort of a uh, a cordial, respectful environment. So you know, you know, you need to be respectful of other people's ideas. You need to be polite. Um, you know, it's it's fine to have strong opinions because lots of people have strong opinions. But when we discuss them, we we expect people to to discuss them in a in a very civil and friendly and constructive manner. So that's kind of the first yeah. one: is make sure you come with a positive attitude. Yes. and share that positive attitude, right? Mm -hmm. Don't just say like, ah, this is all terrible. Why are you doing this, right? It's more like, hey, I think you could do better if we did this or that, and here's some mm -hmm. ideas, and I'm willing to help. And, you know, that kind of attitude will get you a lot further. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. the, the second thing I'd really, you know, highlight is that it's not like we have a pile of people just waiting to do work that somebody asks mm -hmm. else asks for. Um, you know, where, you know, there's some companies who have projects and, you know, they basically are creating a product. So they pay people to look at, you know, feature requests and all that kind of stuff. So in, in the node project, it's really more about if you want something new, you, you know, volunteer to, to do that. So opening an issue saying you should do X, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is okay. Like, you know, we like to know what people want and need. But if mm -hmm. you really want to make it happen, consider how you can help make that happen and, and volunteer mm -hmm. to make it happen. Because mm -hmm. those will go a lot further than the, hey, just I need you to do something, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like that too. Um, what do you feel like you guys really need help with? Uh, we have... Code reviews or like 
a specific well, documentation work paper. is, is mm -hmm. one where you know there's the there's definitely the feeling we could improve that and it's but it would be a fairly big effort mm -hmm. to like make a substantial difference there the other thing we could really use help with is in like people getting up to speed on specific subsystems mm -hmm. um you know the http the um file system like we don't have enough people who can act as the ongoing and consistent reviewers of the different sections right like mm -hmm. um so certainly you know people who are willing to, to make that kind of investment mm -hmm. uh build and release we can always use you know that's again something where you know it's it's a fairly big effort to keep our release infrastructure going so we can mm -hmm. use help there it is one again that's a bit harder to ramp up because obviously we don't just give the keys to the the kingdom mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. anybody um, but if you do have an interest in in sort of infrastructure and helping you know build that infrastructure, not just the day-to-day -day keep it running, but also like how could we do things more efficiently? So for example, we're currently uh, worked on something called, uh, well, it's Ansible AWS, which lets us run scripts. And the goal is to like create a new group of people called build helpers who can actually do some of the work that you need to do to keep the machines running without having to have full access. Um, but you know, somebody with uh, who's been contributing and runs into sort of roadblocks and mm -hmm. you know, if you can figure out the scripts and stuff like that that will help you be able to do those things without having to have access, you know, that's the kind of work where you could do in the build work group. Releases, you know, we've again that's one where it's a fair amount to do releases. So we like to have people who have an, who have, you know, have a number of different people who can do those releases. Again, you know, a pretty significant commitment to to get involved, ramp up and sort of do releases over time. Right. Right. But that's amazing. So those are great. Yeah. So if you really want to invest in this, uh, there's it seems like there's definitely paths forward. Yeah. Yeah. You can go all the way from like, you know, the, the code contributions to the infrastructure to releases to the more sort of forward thinking link thinking like the next 10. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's we you know, I'd personally like us to have a pretty good view of like to be successful here. Are the things we think are key for Node and JavaScript. And then we can kind of push down on like, well, here are the five things. Is the project doing enough to support those? So for example, you know, types is a big trend where I wouldn't say everybody, lots of, I, I still talk to people and it's maybe 50-50, you know, half of them love types, half of them hate types. But even if you say it's like 50-50, there's still 50% is an important uh, you know, yes. part of the people that we want to make sure we're doing the right things for, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's like, you know, the, my, you know, my question is not necessarily that we should be generating the types because maybe the, the process that's already set, you know, in, in process is doing the right things, but is there anything the project can do to sort of enable the people who are doing that work, right? So yeah. looking at each of those areas and, and, and that's where like, if people have a, have a specific ex area of expertise outside of Node and they can bring that view and expertise to the Node project, they could actually contribute um, because, you know, for example, I'm pretty focused on Node and have a good feeling for what's going on there, but I don't know as much about types, right? So yeah. that's, a way, that's a way people can bring their expertise. And actually, it's probably worth mentioning just that that's the way I, you know, one of my recommendations to people is to think about, well, what expertise do you have and how does that apply to the Node project? Um, you know, because maybe you know more about that than the rest of the people in the Node project and you can help by contributing on that, that kind of front. I love that. I love that. So, you know, a lot of projects I talk to, you know, there's like, there's issues, obviously, and you guys actually have an issues repo, right? Yep. Um, but, you know, can people just pick things up? Do they ask first? Do they comment on things? Like, is it just the issues repo where everything is filed or, I mean, because, you know, you have so many repo, like how is that all managed? So still like, yeah, like node core is where most of the issues. So there's all those repos. And so if you want to get into discussion on build, obviously the issues in the build repo are related to the build, mm -hmm. the build stuff and the release mm -hmm. or release issues in, in core, that's the issues. Like, you know, if there's, if you wanted to get advice on like, hey, I think we should add a new API or 
or, um, you know, I'm, you know, you're thinking of doing something and you want some advice, that's where I would open the issue just to give people the heads up. Okay, got it, got it. You know, I think this is what I want to do. Here you go. Then in the, in the repo itself, um, you know, I'm going to take a node. Now we, the node repo. And if I look at the issues, we have a number of tags. And I'm wondering if we still have like a good label. Good first issue tag or something. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we do. I'm just looking to see how many of them there are right now. So I can actually just share that for a second. Let me drag that to the right screen. And uh, then if I share that screen, okay, you can see like here are a number of ones that were tagged um, that people issue, thought yeah. were good first issues. So, so if you're looking for something to do, mm -hmm. you know, again, that's, that's a way to, um, you know, find an issue that somebody's already tagged and uh, decided was a, a interesting one. The yeah. other one I would look for where just because I think it'd be super useful is flaky. So these ones that say flaky test, mm -hmm. those are ones where, you know, they, they don't fail all the time, but they fail occasionally in our CI and they do cause us a lot of grief. Yeah. Um, because when you want to lighter PRs, uh, they always have to get through the CI. And if things are flaky, then it, you know, basically means that, uh, we have to restart and anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to have no flaky tests. And so again, <laughs> this is this is a pretty good way to start. I think testing is actually a good way to start. We have coverage, uh, coverage.nojs.org. So you can look at code coverage. So you can say mm -hmm. like, is there missing testing? That's one way to, to contribute. This is another one is to say like, okay, I'm gonna look at these tests. I'm gonna understand them and I'm gonna figure out why they're flaky. It, mm -hmm. it can be a fair amount of work because you have to like, run the test a bunch of times to see if you found the reason, mm -hmm. really understand the test. Mm -hmm. But again, like, you know, I mentioned before, if you want to say ramp up on a particular area, this is actually a, you know, a good way to learn about child processes or crypt or, you know, all these different areas, mm -hmm. you know, it's a good way to say, well, I want to learn something about part of the API and do it in a way where I'm, I've got a concrete goal, which is to figure out what's wrong with this test. Why is it flaky? Often there's like race conditions or, you know, something, something based on the timing. They're not always, uh, you know, sometimes they're tagged with a platform, but often that's just because like, say Linux one is faster than all the other machines. So the, the, the timing is different and therefore, um, you know, you see a flaky test there versus somewhere else. Hmm. But yeah, this is another good way to look for things that, uh, you know, will add significant impact to the project and help out by getting rid of those those flaky tests. Well, and you can see there's quite a few. So uh, yes, yes. Are there any like non code contributions people can do to add value to the community? Yeah, so that's where like, you know, we, we already talked about the documentation one. Mm -hmm. And um, so let me just I'll stop screen sharing here for a second. So yeah, you can go back to documentation, but there's also the uh, discussions that we have in the next 10 and the package maintenance efforts. Mm -hmm. Those are two where like in the package maintenance, we talk about issues which are challenges to package maintainers and what we can do to help that. So by joining that discussion, um, it's not it's not like core code, um, but it is things that like, you know, uh, there's been some work on defining um, some additional support information that people can provide to close the gap between like maintainers and the people who use their modules. So they right. can say like, well, this is only a hobby. This is only a hobby. There is no support, that kind of stuff. Right. And, you know, I, 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 I have, I have this vision that maybe like license checks someday we could have a check that goes through and you would say like, Hey, here's, here's what my modules are telling me. And if I'm a business running my critical infrastructure, and, you know, my tools have told me, well, this is just a hobby module. Maybe that's on me, right? Versus don't, yes, don't, don't yes. go complain to the, the maintainer yeah. or go help the maintainer. Offer them support through, you know, one of the funding platforms. Send your employees to go help with the package. But, you know, basically a way to, to, to 
give businesses and you know larger pe- organizations that use modules more information to say and hopefully incent them to go out and help the modules that they're using and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I love that. I can't so remember there, there's, this project. Oh God, what was it called? There's like a specific project that I think like tells you like the last releases and kind of like list out, you know, all the things on, basically gives you like a bunch of NPM stats and a little bit more. Right. I have to remember the name of it, but I feel like, uh, you know, Ember add-ons for example, does that really well. Uh, well, actually it's, is it called, I think it's called Ember Observer dot com now, but there's so many other great examples there. I'm sure there's a node one somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I think there is, but I can't remember the name either. But yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. So, the, you know, there's that that uh, next 10, like I said, which is looking at the, the future. Yeah. Um, you know, releases are only sort of code contributions. So mm-hmm. you don't necessarily need to be deep in the weeds of the C++ code if you're doing releases. Um, mm-hmm. The Let me think what else. If I look at, um, I'm just going to see what else we have in the repo. But... Well, there's like website. There's definitely, yeah, fun. sorry, I should have mentioned the website one where, you know, there's there's the people who help and there's like the Node.js.dev, which is kind of a, a reimagining of it um, mm-hmm. where people could be involved. Uh, translations and stuff. So that's, you know, there is translations on the website side of uh, side of things. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, build is infrastructure, so it's not uh, code contributions either. Yeah. Uh, what about your, so I, I mean, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask anyways, because I don't think sure. everybody does. Um, core team meetings, can anybody attend? Where do they attend? I mean, you showed us the calendar. Yep. So I guess that's probably, it's kind of amazing because like anybody can join any meeting, basically. Yeah, that that's basically true, except for the TSC meeting. That's the one yes. where... It is streamed live, so anybody can watch, but the TSC, the Technical Steering Committee meeting is the one that we have like a defined invitee set. Yeah. And those are the people who can actually participate. Yeah. Uh, We do have guests though, so like we often invite additional people if we're talking on a particular topic, that kind of stuff. All the other meetings are very open and basically anybody can show up. So just, you know, here I'll I'll share again and I can show some examples of that stuff. That's good, okay, (laughs) so yeah, so we can look like, so we'll just see, so if we go to, sorry, GitHub, GitHub. So of course, you you know, we showed before, you can go to the calendar, you can find them all there. Mm-hmm. But what also happens is driven off the calendar, we get an issue which is generated for each of the meetings mm-hmm. in the associated repo. So this is, for example, mm-hmm. the technical steering committee meeting this week. Um, you know, it has the agenda, in this case has the people are announced, and it has the link here where you could watch it live. Um, in the case of, let's look at, for example, the uh, next 10 meeting. I don't think there's one scheduled. What else is scheduled for this week? Let's look at the calendar. So back to the calendar. And today is the 15th, so it's okay. So we can look at the diagnostics working group. If I go there, we'll see that there's an issue also created for this week. It's got the links basically again has a, you know, they'll look very familiar because we use the same tool. Yeah. Um, it's got the, uh, the the agenda and it's got the link for the participation. So the calendar itself won't necessarily have the link for the meeting, but if you if you see the entry in the calendar, you can then know that you know there'll be an issue a few days in advance of the meeting in the repo where you can go and find the uh, you know either the Zoom to join in person or if you want to watch, you can just stream as well. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Well, so cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Um, You know, uh, for those of you who like are interested in this, you know, Michael, his Twitter handle's right there, mhdawson1 on Twitter. Um, And yeah, I just hope, I hope more people start contributing to Note. Again, it's such a 
good project. It's such a big project. <laughs> So and there's see. so many people using Node that it's it's like very valuable experience and knowledge to have to to run when you're running your applications. It's just like a, it's good to know what's going on in the lower layers is what I always say because when things yeah. go wrong, it'll help you figure out what's going on a lot more easily. Yeah, no, that is so amazing. And thank you, Michael, again for being just like such an awesome person in the Node community and uh, taking some time with us. No problem. Nice talking to you. Thank <laughs> you.